Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. RetroArch just got a huge update. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, as of September 5th, just a couple of days ago, RetroArch 1.9.9 was released, and with that came a few big changes. The first big change, and probably the biggest takeaway of this entire video, is that HDR is now available on the Windows version of RetroArch, but this is only available on PC. At a really high level here, HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, and it'll basically make your games look a whole lot better. It currently works with Direct3D 11 and Direct3D 12 but that's it. Enabling HDR is very simple and straightforward, provided your monitors support it. First and foremost, make sure you're running version 1.9.9. If you don't have it, upgrade your RetroArch. The next step to do is go into your driver's settings, go into video, and make sure you're using Direct3D 11 or Direct3D 12. HDR is not available for any other setting. From there, click on Settings and then Video, and the HDR option should show up on the menu. And if it doesn't, it might mean that your monitors don't support it. Like mine. Mine don't support HDR, so it's not showing up. This might be a pretty good sign that it's time for me to upgrade. To check to see if your monitors support HDR is also very simple and straightforward. Go into your PC settings. Click on the search icon in the taskbar and there are two ways to get there. One, you can just type in settings or two, you can just type in HDR and that should bring up the Windows HD color settings. I have three monitors plugged into my computer and none of them support HDR. It says use HDR and no, so that's unfortunate. If your monitor does support HDR, you should should see an option that says use HDR if it's turned off just turn it on and then you'll see the option in RetroArch. Next up here if you're using RetroArch on a 3DS version 1.9.9 now has a bottom touchscreen menu. Next up AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR for short has been added. It works with the following video drivers Metal, OpenGL Core, Direct3D 11 and Direct3D 12. This will really help sharpen up some games. The image above me has no shaders applied. The image in the center has FSR applied, and the image on the right has SMAA plus FSR. If you take a look, you can notice an immediate difference between the no shader image and the image with FSR. And then if you take a look at the SMAA image, you can see the colors are a little bit more pronounced, especially on the shoulder here. In my opinion here, FSR might come in handy if you're looking for a bit of a sharper image, but maybe your system just can't handle increasing the resolution. If your system is compatible with FSR, I definitely recommend checking it out. And the last main thing here is an enhanced search functionality for the cheats menu. If you don't know how to cheat with RetroArch, I'll leave a link for a video in the description below. I've got you covered. Now these are just the main changes. In addition to this, they've made some general improvements and fixed some bugs. I'll leave a link to the change log in the description below and I do recommend checking it out. One thing I wanted to point out, we're at RetroArch version 1.9.9. We're getting real close to RetroArch version 2, and I'm extremely excited to see what that brings. But anyways, that is all I've got for this video. Let me know your thoughts on this new version of RetroArch in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Thank you, everyone. Take care.